Hi all, our notable game today takes another game from the legend of chess, Robert James Fisher, also known as Bobby Fisher. This game is taken from the Stockholm Interzonal back in 1962, so this is 10 years before Fisher's World Chess Championship match with Boris Spassky. Fisher was still, at, even at this point, 10 years before, remarkably strong. This was an incredibly strong 23 player round robin with six players qualifying for the Curacao candidates of 1962. The winner was Bobby Fisher with plus 13, drawing nine and losing no games. Joint second with 15 points were Geller and Petrosian. So a fantastically strong tournament. Uh, now, Eugenio Marcial German was born in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. He was the first Brazilian player to be awarded the IM title, which he received in 1952. He was Brazilian champion in 1951 and 72, and played in the Olympiads of 1952 at Helsinki, 1968 at Lugano. In 1962, he finished 19th, this is in this tournament, out of 23 at this Stockholm Interzonal Tournament. Yeah, so it was, he turned out to be one of you know, the lower um, res results scoring players in the tournament. Let's see what he did against Fischer, how he played. E4 from Fischer, and Eugenio played e5. After knight f3, we have a very solid attempt at an opening, the Petrov defense. Knight f6. Though in live book, the most common response is just to take on e5. The second most popular, though, and we're talking 3,000 games, is d4. So this is 10,000, over 10,000 games just taking. But d4 is quite popular over 3,000, and this is what Fisher chose. Now, normally, Black just takes on e4 here, and an example line, it, it didn't happen in the game, we see e takes d4 in the game. Knight takes e4 might be, it seems statistically, the way most players play for at least equality with Black. This variation is very popular, with pressure on d5, and here there's a, there's a known well-known gambit black plays, gambiting the d5 pawn. But uh, with good good play here for black, there's even 14 games, even from this position, that's quite deep in. But this, this gambit uh, idea of d5 is very, very interesting. So this is the standard trodden line, just taking with the knight, actually. But in this game, we see much rarer. Well, there's d6, which is quite rare, over 800 games. But e takes d4, approaching 300. It's the third most popular choice. But it allows this push through e5. Now, after knight e4. Usually, queen takes d4 is played here. And maybe that was uh, the expectation that Fisher would play queen takes d4 here. Uh, there's over 250 games in this, for example, here, and this is thought to be fairly stable for black, this, this position. Uh, maybe a small advantage for white. But uh, we see much rarer, and there's only three games in live book with this, much rarer, queen e2 here, and maybe black has to improvise a bit now. Knight c5 is played. Uh, the natural looking d5 might actually fail uh, after, well, e takes d6 is not good, doesn't look good uh, for the knight. Is black going to play something like f5? So anyway, no, we see uh, knight c5, knight takes d4, knight c6. And white already has gained a structural advantage now after knight takes c6. We see here b takes c6, knight c3. So it looks uh, as though black might be quite solid enough, but structurally black has been compromised. Rook b8, we see f4, bishop e7. Now the plan here is quite interesting. In front of the double pawns, there's a classic c5 blockade point, but actually here it's also an immediate pressure point. 
we see queen f2 actually being played with the idea of bishop e3 to challenge the knight on c5 which is black's most aggressive piece in the position and if the bishop can move there then white can actually castle queenside next we see d5 bishop e3 now knight d7 and white castles queenside so we get an exciting scenario in fact because both sides castling on other sides of the board to each other and Fisher plays a hyper aggressive g4 now we see bishop b4 and the knight goes to e2 and it seems as though both c5 and d4 are good blockade and pressure points and white might even be threatening to take this pawn now we see this next move knight b6 which is looking potentially aggressive for the knight coming to c4 the bishop's not covering c4 here or a4 and it's also of course covering a7 technically knight d4 helps defend the c4 square now against knight c4 at least and hits c6 so black plays now a defensive move he has to defend c6 here if he takes on g4 he played actually queen e8 but if he takes on g4 then this is quite the fork here after knight takes c6 the bishop here the queen and the rook yeah black doesn't want this position we can just snap off the bishop and be material up for example so black plays an awkward looking in some respects move but on the other hand if c5 is played then the queen's got a4 there's no defender of a4 here so in some respects it seems as though is this a risky decision castling queenside because black has got the file open on the b file in any case as well we see c3 bishop goes back and now maybe bishop takes g4 is on but this is sorting things out and threatening f6 now and is white with an attacking an advantage here it seems as though already his pawns are ominous looking with f6 already in the air c5 is played is the queen going to come to a4 is there going to be any attack from black this is a very very interesting position uh, if fisher plays a move like knight c2 then maybe you know queen a4 is quite interesting for black or knight a4 in fact might be to more to the point let's have a look here is this slightly awkward for white is he going to be attacked on the queen side if knight c2 it's interesting knight a4 is given actually as a small advantage for black initially but it's a complex position uh, after f6 bishop d8 this is a complex position it seems as though it looks this is looking very scary this variation whatever happens so in fact fisher plays a different move knight b5 here blocking the queen from a4 seemingly threatening both f6 and knight takes a7 or knight takes c7 so multiple threats but what about this forcing move black has now in this position black played d4 and technically engines will indicate well my engine indicates that black actually is doing very well after this d4 this looks like a very resourceful move indeed from black what is the point of it fisher sidesteps here with bishop f4 now let's imagine fisher took c takes d4 bishop takes d4 black has resources here the most important is queen c6 check and look it's looking at the rook yeah <laughs> it really that rook can actually be taken here without the queen being trapped the rook's hanging here as well so there's no bishop g2 and if f6 black has resources bishop takes bishop takes g4 
and black's fine black's more than fine so yeah black has resources here with this queen c6 idea hitting the king and the loose rook a good resource it seems d4 bishop f4 is played so not opening up the lines the c line as much now it's here that maybe black's best move might be one of two either to kick the knight or to play knight d5 to hit this bishop it seems uh these are very interesting uh possibilities another one is c4 also blocking the bishop away from the knight there, there are numerous possibilities which actually to be fair they all seem to be fairly promising from an engine evaluation perspective here for example c4 blocking the knight the knight's protection if knight takes it seems white is a little bit greedy here and black's getting the dynamic play if you look at this position black's getting play against white's king this is getting awfully scary now with knight a4 this is not the sort of ideal position fisher should have with his king seemingly being a little bit scary now his king safety this sort of position favors black so it seems c4 is is technically uh a nice move after this bishop f4 c4 seems to be a very nice move instead of being greedy here maybe not taking on c7 maybe this is an improvement taking this one but again you know white is being subjected to uncomfortable pressure here this is not ideal by any stretch of the imagination black is doing more than well here in this variation so yeah it seems as though c4 was a very very good idea for black after bishop f4 a6 as well so that cuts out what knight takes d4 if knight a3 this this is good for black yeah fisher's been a little bit let off it seems by black's next move here a6 if takes encouraging materialism but getting dynamism dynamic play for black this is a very interesting way of playing things if f6 maybe black was concerned about this f6 but here it's even possible possible to take it seems in these lines that um the white king is looking a little bit shaky with things like knight a4 to come this is a little bit scary any queen c2 there's d3 here there's resources like this i know it's, it gets incredibly hairy but uh black is getting to white's king in these variations so it it is one of the scary positions uh that could have could have happened yeah a6 or c4 it's a it's a nice position for black but black unfortunately played d takes c3 and somehow even though there's a natural human instinct to think that line opening against the king is associated with taking pawns unfortunately there's something about this which kind of improves white's king safety the knight comes to a more ideal defensive position now after knight takes c3 black hasn't got such an aggressive pawn formation as those very variations show black tries this aggressive looking move knight a4 i may have been banking on this this is the idea who's banking on this idea which looks super aggressive hitting b2 and c3 but there's a technical problem with this and this is why those other lines with c4 and a6 may represent a serious missed opportunity at least from a theoretical perspective because white has a very very fine an accurate defensive move available here at move 21 which fisher indeed plays can you guess what white can play here he doesn't want to invite the queen for dinner near to his king what does fisher play if i give you five seconds to pause the video in this position starting from now okay a connection cutting move bishop b5 cutting the connection between e8 and a4 like c4 would have done between f1 and b5 there's a symmetry of ideas as well in these variations now some have speculated about a queen sack 
idea in this position with knight takes c3 the queen sack is interesting to quickly check out this position but uh, white here can insert bishop takes f7 and white will end up being better it's a bit speculative this queen sack if we ignore the queen sack and look at the game continuation we see rook takes b5 otherwise black's just going to be losing the a4 knight if he moves his queen can't play bishop b7 got d7 covered so rook takes b5 but now the interruption tactic knight takes a4 and yes it's the aggressiveness of black's pawn structure has been significantly reduced and white's king safety looks fantastic now in fact white is looking now to his own attack without so much worry about his own king safety yeah if you remember those variations we saw they were very very scary with c4 instead but now after rook b4 we've got a nice defensive knight on c3 the queen has been kept out of a4 but that plays bishop b7 here after rook he1 that adds weight to now f6 not just getting it out of the way but actually f6 now with this nasty latent pin on the bishop and black's pretty much doomed here now he's in a very 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 bad way in this position after this what does black actually play uh the best might be apparently bishop d1 bishop d8 just getting out of the way but f6 it's it's scary white's going to continue with his attack it seems here but black really crumbled quite quickly from this position king h8 f6 now and there's quite a difference here bishop with the king on h8 bishop g5 is threatening fg7 check with the king on h8 this might not be the optimal defense we see rook d4 f takes g7 check bishop f6 check and now shielding the h4 square is that pawn and white uses that fact with queen h4 threatening to mate black yeah it's got to a quick mating net very very quick mating net based on the decision to capture a pawn which is you might think logically by the sound of it you're opening up lines but sometimes it's more important to keep your your aggressive pawn structure so we see black here just in a completely losing position now rook takes white now is careful to play knight takes d1 so that in the event of bishop takes f6 e takes is possible covering the e3 square it's covered twice now anyway and here faced with queen g5 black resigns it's it's a hopeless position there's a mating net around his king in fact both these pieces are not helping the king's exit here it's rather embarrassing this position let's just do a final check here yeah it's it's an absolute forced mate the best move given by the engine is queen takes here taking here we takes we've got queen g5 and we're also starting to win the queen so here we can actually even ignore the queen just go queen g5 and it's just mating on g7 if rook g8 we just take on e8 pinning the rook and we're just mating next move so this shows how yeah one critical attacking mistake can actually lead to the fatality of one's own king fairly swiftly after so you've got to make sure there's no interruption type chess tactics bishop b5 was an interruption type tactic uh, which could have been that kind of tactical resource could have been used by black though the c4 move as mentioned and we'll go let's go back to that critical position is an interruption tactic by black um or, or a6 just forcibly you know trying to get the queen to a4 it's guaranteed it's a more aggressive pawn structure and what it's doing this is aggressive pawn structure. It's also taking away that knight from c3. If you compare and contrast the scenarios, black has to really get at white's king. Otherwise, this f6, as as Fisher shows, can be really quick. 
and dangerous. Very, very tense position. You might think here yeah, couldn't you know f6? Yeah, I mean black's got to carefully navigate as well, but there, there's resources here for black uh, to both defend and like attack at the same time. With still d take c3 be a more pot potent option. I think really one factor, one key factor is this knight placement here. D take c3 is much more effectual because the knight's stuck on c7 over here, and this starts to you know get very dangerous for, for white's king. More dangerous. Uh, for white's king than black and if white goes for material there's things like rook takes b3 here sacrificial dynamic attacking play is on the cards how, how the tables can be turned in chess but uh yeah the key thing about this game seems to be this also this this uh blocking this interference tactic idea i mean this this is dangerous here if we take this here, for example, this position again, who's getting to who's king first in this position? Again, it seems as though there's great pressure with black threatening knight a4. So this let's, let's do some nutshell conclusions again about this game because it ended abruptly after that little disaster sequence. Fisher played quite novelly in the opening to start off with against the Petrov defense. So he didn't take on e5. He played a more novel uh, approach. He played an early d4. And then uh, black after this knight e4 might have been expecting queen takes d4. Again, a novel move by Fisher, queen e2. It's as if Fisher was accelerating the process of castling queenside with known dangers. So he took calculated risks and black yeah may may have been in a position to potentially capitalize on white's king on the queen side but he needed to know the interruption type resources intimately that he could use or that fisher could use to be aware of how to make his attack attack slightly quicker more effective than fisher's attack on the king's side and it didn't work out like that so fisher got through very very quickly after to be mating the black king so a very, very interesting uh, lesson there that you've got to get your resources right, your interruption resources, and you've got to look at your aggressive pawn structure and where the defensive pieces are in relation to your attack to sort of measure its effectiveness a bit to get a gauge on how effective it is. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.